everybody, I'm Maggie and this is my partner Amy and together we're Thinker Themer and today we're going to be looking at Mariposas, the board game by Elizabeth Hargrave of Wingspan fame and um, published by AEG. And the reason, normally I would do the intro into our videos, but the reason why I asked Maggie to step in and do the intro today is because she's a native Spanish speaker. She just wanted me to say mariposas the oh, way that it's meant to. I mean, <laughs> when Elizabeth Hargrave created this game, she imagined it being said the way that sure. Maggie, say it again, say it again. It's mariposas. Yeah, it's, mariposas. it's beautiful. Yeah. So in Australian, it sounds more like mariposas. <laughs> um, actually, you know, in Australian, it would be like, Lizzie's game Mazapaza. Mazapaza. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Want to have a game of yeah, Mazapaza? Mazapaza. It's uh, Australian Muddy Forces. That yes. would be. <laughs> yeah. So every time I have to say something in this game that, you know, requires an accent, I may just like kind of nudge Maggie Mazapaza. to say it because it just sounds way better than Mazapaza. So. Not Mazapaza, but in Mariposas, the objective of the game or the theme of the game, which is beautifully integrated, just like anything that Elizabeth Hargrave has produced thus far, is looking at the migration of monarch butterflies from Mexico every year in the spring, all the way through to the eastern North America, and then back um, for fall. The interesting thing about this, this migration is that no one butterfly makes the whole round trip. So along the way, you're in control of these butterflies and you're actually helping them evolve, hatch new butterflies or the new generations. And they're the ones who are going to be able to make it back. One of the- Is that real? Yeah. That's exactly what the, the theme is about, and that's that's fully real. I mean, it makes sense in the game and the way it plays <laughs> out, but in real life, so yeah. they breed along the way, and then yeah, yeah, so, their offspring make yeah. So the mi the migration, so it happens every year. Nature so from is amazing. Spring, it really is, <laughs> and the inspiration from the game was actually a butterfly. Is it sanctuary? I think is the word that Elizabeth Hargrave visited in Mexico. Uh, that kind of inspired all of this and then she talks about another uh, amazing book that puts this whole journey into novel form but we start in Michoacan the area of Michoacan in Mexico and we will be making sure that we're along the way going through the other key thing is these way stations and this is something that is happening across the world where people are becoming uh, butterfly farmers or helping these butterflies with the the food and supplies they need along the way so they can make that journey this is an incredibly educational thing as well because what this is teaching us is we're actually losing a lot of these butterflies because of just pollution. So these way stations that are man-made are a way of supporting them. And apparently we lost like 80% of this, the monarch um, butterfly, this particular type of, uh, of butterfly uh, in a very short, like less than 10 year period. So it's now in a dangerously low uh, population, potentially, yeah, danger of extinction and so this is also an educational game for anyone that's that's going to be playing it anyone that was paying attention clearly wasn't me <laughs> i was just like oh pretty butterfly it is very beautiful as well aeg has been yeah putting oh, out really nailing it incredible the com components. yeah let's like let's talk about the component quality the mm. board the color of this board yeah. um being that contrast dark color just makes all the other colors pop so much. It's so beautiful. And then, oh my goodness, these little containers that Boxes. all of the um, flower mm. tokens fit into that come with the game makes setup so easy and you know make sure that everything doesn't go flying around in the box. Yeah. So um, yeah, component quality is impeccable. Yeah. So talk us through the mechanics. Yeah, so the game, um, and it is extremely well integrated with the journey that mm -hmm. the butterflies make that Maggie has mentioned from Michoacan. Thank you. Um, up through all of these different way stations, different cities um, in North America and um, in Canada. And what's really interesting about this game is you start with a single butterfly who is a level one butterfly, mm -hmm. and you're trying to upgrade that butterfly as you move up the track. Um, to mimic, I guess, the breeding yeah, and the um, then the next uh, generation of butterfly mm -hmm. continuing the journey. Um, but your journey is very focused around um, three different seasons, so spring, summer, fall, and the objectives that fall under each of those seasons. So you start with spring and in spring you will have four turns each. 
and what you're trying to achieve in those four turns is you can see here, obviously this is variable um, objectives at, um, when you're setting up. You can see here that you want to have two butterflies by the end of spring and you want them to be north of Atlanta on the board. So Atlanta is here on the board. You wanna have your two butterflies be north of that city. If you achieve that, you get four victory points. The second goal is if you can have three butterflies and they're on yellow, red, and green spaces on the board, um, not necessarily together, but just one on each of those colors, you will get four victory points. So that's what you have to keep in mind when you're playing your four turns in this season. On your turn, or one of your four turns, consists of taking the two cards that you have in your hand and choosing one that is going to give you a movement structure for your butterfly or butterflies. So for example, if I was to play this card, first of all, on my turn, it says that I can take my butterfly five steps and land on um, a flower space um, or if I can make it to one of the different cities or way stations as they're called in this game. So I would take my butterfly and if I wanted to move up along the flowers, I could go one, two, three, four, five. When I land on this flower, I take the matching flower token and I add it into my supply. Very straightforward, easy to understand. If I am within the um, vicinity Milkweed. of milkweed, which is um, this symbol here on the board. So these three spaces would be in the vicinity of this milkweed. I get the opportunity to breed. Yeah, hatch a new one. To hatch a new butterfly. And in order to do that, it depends on what level that current butterfly is. So here I've got a level one butterfly. In order to get to a level two butterfly, I need two flowers of the same um, in terms of the flower tokens or any three, so any combination of three. At the moment, I only have one flower token, so not nowhere near enough to breed, and so that would be the end of my turn. Alternatively, if I had taken the five steps and gone one, two, three, four, five, and landed on Houston. The way station. The way station at Houston, I would turn it over and these are placed at random and the first person to go there doesn't know what to expect. In this case, I've turned over this blue caterpillar, which relates to one of these life cycle cards on the separate board um, here in the corner. And you can see that there are four types of blue cards. I've just revealed this card. So I get to take this caterpillar and add it into my collection. And in this game, this game really revolves around, aside from the movement, it revolves around set collection. So you're set collecting the different flower tokens, as I mentioned, because they're gonna help you um, breed and generate new butterflies. Um, but set collection also in terms of these cards. So if I can get all four of these blue cards, I now have one of four, I will get the additional bonus at the end of that row. And again, these bonuses are randomly selected at the beginning of the game um, and will stay that way until the end of the game. So by landing on a way station, I get that bonus, but I also get to roll the die um, and collect a flower as well because I was the first person to go there. Um, so subsequent people will only get that card if they go there. So I roll the die and it gives me a flower. I take that relevant token and that would have been my turn instead of the alternative move that I sh have shown you. At the end of that turn, um, I would simply draw up and um, be back at two cards in my hand for my next turn. And that really is all there is to this yeah. game. Um, the next person would then play a card, move accordingly, um, breed if they're able to, and um, then draw up their card. So it's really simple in terms of the mechanics and um, really easy to teach. This is um, definitely a lighter weight game. Um, the other part of it is that you can only upgrade your butterfly to the next level. So you can't go from a one to a three, you have to go one, two, three, four, and then the fours actually turn over and are worth um, two fours at the end. And what's interesting is 
after each season. So after we check, so we've played our four cards, we check if we've achieved the objectives, we will then get a bonus two butterfly added to our um, butterflies, but we have to remove all the ones. So as we progress through the seasons, you can see after summer, we'll get a free three, but we have to remove all the twos. There's, uh, you've got to continue to upgrade and give birth to the next generation of butterflies. Otherwise you won't have enough um, to play with. And as you go through, um, as we finish spring and move into summer, new objectives are revealed. They're harder to achieve with fewer butterflies. You need to have more butterflies to achieve them. But in summer, we get five turns or five cards. And in fall, we get six turns or six cards. So you do get a little more time in fall. And what's interesting is by the time fall comes around, you might have four butterflies or so on the board. And um, a lot of these will be level four if you've done <laughs> if you've done your work correctly. But in fall, it really changed, the objective changes to try to race back to where you started mm -hmm. from. Because if you can get back home to... Me truck on. Thank you. Um, with level four butterflies, there's a sliding scale that is worth quite a lot of points depending mm -hmm. on the number of four butterflies you can get back home. Remembering that the ultimate upgrade of a four is to this turning it over and it's worth two four butterflies, but that counts towards two at the end. So um, it's interesting that towards the end of the game in fall, it just becomes a race wow. and a calculation of how many cards you have in your hand and can how many butterflies can you get back home. Um, the game is fairly straightforward. There's not much more to it than what I've just explained, yeah. I think, which um, usually we don't cover all of the rules, but that's essentially how the game plays out. Um, obviously, you're checking to see if you've achieved any of the set collection with the cards along the way. And I should mention that um, at the end of each season, you also add the cards that you've collected as one victory point each. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, we've only, I should note that before we go into what we thought about the game, we've only played it as a two play again, again, a two player game, sorry, again, being in Melbourne and lockdown, yeah. it's um, very difficult for us to, well, it's illegal. Yeah, it's, illegal. <laughs> it's illegal for us to get together with anyone yeah. to play any game. So we've played this as two player. I really think this game would probably be better with three mm. or four players. Um, and that's mainly because when you make your way to a way station and you turn it over and you reveal what it is, everybody else then knows mm. where these cards are located. Yeah. And if you've got more people revealing more things, it's going to make it easier to get those sets. It was almost impossible yeah. for us to just wander around and try and find the correct combination yeah. of those um, four cards. Turns to be able to with two players cover the whole board. Yeah, you know? so it really comes down to luck, whether mm -hmm. you're ever going to get a set. I, we've played this quite a few times and neither of us have ever achieved yeah. a set, We're actually. We're terrible at it. Well, yeah. I think also we're placing way more emphasis on trying to get back yeah. in the last season to get the really great number of victory mm -hmm. points at the end. Yeah. I think overall, like thematically, again, just beautiful integration. You do feel like you are either the butterfly or you are the wind beneath its wings moving it around in your landing from flower to flower you're trying to make it to the places where you're going to be able to hatch to get you know or to feed to have your milkweed and your way stations so i think it's it's fantastic integration from that point of view i enjoy also this yeah the final race of trying to get them back to mitrakan because otherwise like the ones that don't make it back you don't get any points for um, but yeah, it's, it's a fairly simple game. Great from an education point of view, great from a bringing awareness. I, as a, uh, animal crossing, um, player hadn't realized how endangered monarch butterflies were. Cause well, if you're, you were catching them, and yeah, them because they're everywhere. They're actually in the, in the game in animal crossing, they're a pest. It's like they're everywhere, but actually it, it, they're not, uh, yeah, they're obviously they're not everywhere. And, and it's one of those things that we want to protect. So, you know, good on Elizabeth for, for doing this. Yeah, and I, obviously Wingspan. Amazing, yeah, amazing game. Was her debut, which was, you know, game of the year kind of debut. Yeah. Um, she is, uh, you know, this is another incredible 
insight into you know the way that she views Mm. the natural environment and I also love the uniqueness of her themes that are not fantasy I know I say this every review but not fantasy (laughs) not space you know it's something different and it's Mm. really accessible it's really accessible accessible, um, for all types of people and um, that's what I really enjoy about her games Uh, this particular game is not my cup of tea It's very simple. I think we tend to, yeah, enjoy it. It's far, far too simple for Mm us. Um, This would be, I could imagine this actually being a great um, family Mm -hmm. level game. I think that um, for parents and and their children. And nature lovers. If you're a nature lover. And nature lovers. We've got friends that whenever they visit us, they're just so delighted by all the nature around us. And I think, yeah, they would really enjoy this. Yeah, They would, but I'm not going to bring it out and give it to them <laughs> because this is a game that I don't think we'll be keeping in our collection as, as much as I respect um, Elizabeth Hargrave or Lizzie, as she would definitely be known in Australia. <laughs> yeah. um, Mazapaza. <laughs> Mazapaza is not going to stay in our collection. Um, we will, you know move it on to someone who can appreciate it more because this just won't get enough airtime in our collection because of the level of simplicity and um, it's just not enough for us to sink our teeth into. Um, But yeah, I, again, appreciate the educational element. It is a highly well-produced, beautiful game that will look great on your shelf. If you're someone who, uh, you know, prefers a lighter game Mm. that is, uh, it doesn't, take too take long that. to play it either take well, it's not takes competitive about... in that sense of like you're not frustrating anyone else's plans yeah there's yeah, yeah there's almost no interaction um between players actually mm-hmm. aside from there are some cards where you can copy each other's yeah. cards but you know, that's in yeah. no way interrupting the other person's game mm-hmm. so yeah uh, we would recommend it if you enjoy lighter games or you have a gaming group who um, maybe they're a bit younger or are just getting into board games this would certainly be uh, one for you if you're more like us and into midweight to heavier games um this probably isn't one that we would yeah, recommend this be a bit too light too light would you consider this as a as a potential gateway game no. or for like a non-gamer you wouldn't yeah not for the types of non-gamers in our yeah it, who are in yeah. our friendship group because yeah. I kind of want to push them probably into. <laughs> you have an agenda. I do have honest. an agenda, and I want to. Agenda. I would want them to like move towards the really heavy or Euro yeah. style. Yeah, this would be the type of game that me. if there was a teenager, mm. you know, that would be the kind of game that I would bring out. Or if it's like, or, or if it was like um, someone much older. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, like your oh, parents your mom, or your, your grand mom loves flowers. She might. <laughs> yeah, enjoy it. exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. parents or grandparents, people who are just not interested in any kind of complex rule system, mm-hmm. this is extremely easy to teach. Yeah. So, it would be a great, yeah. um, not necessarily a gateway into harder games, but just a good game in and of itself yeah. to play and get out for that type of audience. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's our thoughts. Yeah, I think if you're comparing it, because my my initial thing was trying to compare it to my experience playing Wingspan, and the thing with Wingspan is. Mm. Wingspan is also very like thematically beautifully integrated. Mm. The ca- the detail of the cards of all the birds and you're learning all those. Th- again, it's very educational from that point. It it almost mimics that bird watching experience, but from a you know you're kind of yeah it like that's so beautifully done. But I feel like because of the engine building mechanic in that game, there's a little bit more to sink your teeth into if you're a, more of a hardcore gamer. So, so I think if you, if I had the option to play one or the other, I'd pro- probably play Wingspan just oh, yeah. from, because, and yeah. Wingspan is a lighter game and a good gateway game. Like I quite, we don't own Wingspan because someone else in, you know, in someone group. else in our group does own it. Um, and I am, I would always be happy to play that game mm. because yeah, there are more options available to you from a strategy perspective and not everyone's doing the same thing. So, you know, you can be going for different habitats or, um, you can go egg strong. I love, yeah. <laughs> love the egg strong. Um, you know, there's lots of different uh, strategies to kind of work your way around. Whereas this one is kind of keeping everybody on the same objectives mm. and um, very much the a very limited kind of set of action cards means that um, you're all really doing the same thing, which yeah, yeah. makes it much simpler. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. So... That's it. That's Mazapaza. That's Mazapaza. That's, <laughs> That's, That's Mariposas. 
So if you enjoy this video, make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel so you can be notified of any upcoming reviews. And we have a lot of them. I think we've got another delivery of another board game today. Every day. I mean, what else is there to do in well, lockdown? Yeah, and just wait for <laughs> deliveries in the mail. So it's the best moment of the day when that happens. So again, thank you so much for your time. Feel free to leave us comments if you've got any questions, any other suggestions, any thoughts. And um, aside from that, we'll see you next time. Bye, Bye for now.